Hey everyone, Jeff here from Mac Observer. I just wanted to give you a quick walkthrough of the new features in the iOS 11 beta. Now, as I get started here, understand this is an early beta, so things could change. Right now though, we're gonna start off with the control center. And uh, as you can see, the control center is completely revamped and revised. We now have what Apple is calling platters that group together certain controls. Um, for example, the top left platter, we have airplane mode, we have our cellular data, we have Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. But if I 3D touch on that platter, it pops out and adds on airdrop and personal hotspot. I just tap back and we go back into our main control center. Music is also a platter. I can start music playing. Um, and then I can 3D touch on it and it gives me an expanded view with volume controls and a playback slider that I can adjust the playback. We have our typical orientation lock. Uh, we've got do not disturb screen mirroring if you 3d touch on screen mirroring it opens up the option to connect to your your airplay receiver or reflector or whatever you're using we've also got sliders now for different sliders i should say because they were there before but they're a little bit different now they're bigger a little bit easier to handle uh, this one adjusts your screen brightness and this one is for volume. Now, I can't remember if some of these are new or not. However, if you 3D touch on the flashlight, you can now adjust the intensity of your flashlight. So it's not just on or off anymore. You can actually have it as, as dim or as bright as you want. If you 3D touch on your timer, you can change the time for your timer. And this is all without going into the actual timer app, so it's a little bit more efficient. 3D touch on the calculator, you can copy your last result. 3D touch on the camera, you can open the camera, take a selfie, record a video, record slow-mo, or take a portrait. And what I'm really excited about, the new control center adds a home button. And I'm not going to show you my passcode. I'll just touch ID that. Um, and it goes you straight into my home where you can adjust your lights or what have you. Now, if you don't want to go all the way to the app, you can 3D touch on the home button and your favorite accessories show up for you to adjust as you need to. So that's the control center. Let's move on to the notification center because that's a little bit different now. Um, you can see I've got my music playback. I've got um, my most recent notification, which Dunkin' Donuts wants me to buy Dunkin' Coffee. I don't drink coffee, so blah. Um, if you drag down a little bit, then you can get back into your recent uh, notifications and you can 3D touch to clear all notifications. So that's the change to the notification center. Um, next, we've got something called markup and the way markup works, let's say I take a screenshot. That screenshot shows up down in the bottom left corner of my screen as a thumbnail. Um, it goes away if you don't do anything with it in a while. So I'll take another one, tap on it, and now I can mark this up however I want. Um, I've got a marker option here. I can do a highlighter, so I can do highlights. If I tap on the plus, I've got some other options, a square, a circle, a call out that I can resize. I can drag it to wherever I want it. Um, I can do an arrow and point to whatever I want to point at. And I can add a signature. I can choose a new one or I can just type one in. 
and that shows up in black which is kind of hard to see but there you have it right there um, there's other options here that I haven't played with yet I'm still exploring but uh, I'm excited to learn more about this the undo button allows you to go through and undo what you've done you can change the shapes of your arrows you can change the color you can add text And it's still a work in progress, but uh, so far it works pretty well. So once you're done, you tap on the share sheet icon and you can assign that to a contact, copy it. Anything that you have a share sheet icon for, you can send it an email, a message. Um, what I want to do, you can even create a watch face from it. I didn't notice that before, so that's kind of cool. Um, there was an icon here to add it to the photo library, and I'm not seeing that now. I'll choose copy. Oh, I remember what it was. If you tap on done, that's where you can save it to your photos. That's right, and then it goes away. So that's markup. Um, as I said, that's early. Um, we don't yet have the ability to go into our share icon from photos and send something to markup. They showed that in the keynote. It's not there yet. I'm hoping it's just something coming soon. Um, and it's not something that is going to be limited to the iPad when, I first saw markup because they were doing it as part of the, of the iPad Pro. I feared it might be iPad only. So far, it looks like it is available on the iPhone as well. Um, so that's markup. Now, the next really exciting thing is files. This is a new app on your phone. And eventually, it will allow you to access your files from your iCloud Drive, other cloud services, um, or your iPhone. Right now it's limited to iCloud Drive, so I can see all of my iCloud Drive files. And I can go to my iPhone and the only app that is there right now is Byword, but I expect that to change as time goes on. And recently deleted, which I haven't deleted anything because I've got plenty of space on my phone and I just don't delete things. Um, you may have just noticed a little blue tab that says what apps are using my location. It says two apps are using my location. Um, I can tap on that and get information about what's using my location. So that's a, that's another new, new feature that wasn't really there before and it might go away. Uh, let's see. Next we have a pretty similar not much change to the Today View. However, there is a widget for the Files app where you can quickly get to your most recently changed files. It looks like that's limited to iCloud Drive files, um, but that may change as time goes on. All right, let's talk about settings. Um, as you all know, iOS 10.3 brought a lot of changes in settings, and not much has changed here. Um, we see a little bit bigger headings for, for the app itself, but not too much has changed. However, some new things have been added. Emergency SOS allows you to have your phone automatically contact your emergency contacts or services like 911 in the United States. If you tap, I believe uh, you need to press the sleep wake button five times uh, quickly to activate that. 
There's also a new accounts and passwords option, and that allows you to access your app and website passwords. Um, it also allows you to change settings for your email accounts and change your fetch and push information. So that's about all that's changed that I've found so far in iOS 11. Some new things, some fun things, and it's still early, so I'm sure it's only going to get better. Uh, stay tuned to Mac Observer in the coming days, and we will have more for you about iOS 11 as I continue unearthing the new features and exciting new options that we have in the mobile operating system. Talk to you later.